program to listen to because we have different subjects and different uh, thematics and you can uh, hear and see everything online on your own you can see the exhibitors you can see what they present what they are sharing with you also you can choose the speakers would you like to listen to and in fact it gives you the opportunity to regulate your own business day but what i would like to share with you today first of all some lectures are going to be given in english so if you are here online you can choose the language either english or russian if you need the russian translation of course then you just click on russian and if you want to listen to the lecture in the original you can choose just english then the next thing that i'd like to tell you please remember to see what is broadcast online this is in the business program because we have a lot of booths that are ready to share with you their programs uh, we are also going to broadcast this Picardo Week 2021, and this company uh, will also be presented online. I think that this menu is very well organized, it is very simple, it is very user friendly. And now I am coming to the most important thing and to our main speaker, to our most important speaker. This is like the main pillar in the decorative textile design and it is with great pleasure that i'm presenting you Anne marie commandor anna marie is online with us and right now she's in her office she's the founder of the design studio steel and then steel institute in amsterdam and she creates um, a lot of different trends it is with great pleasure and with great respect that I now give the floor to Anne. Hello, and many thanks for this very kind introduction. I'm really pleased to be here and many thanks for inviting me to talk to you. It's really an honor to be here. I've been there like seven or eight times at the exhibition in Moscow, which was always a wonderful event with uh, wonderful visitors also coming to the lecture. So I'm glad that I still can talk to you now. So I would like to start to share my screen immediately because I have a lot to tell you. So moving into my presentation, um, I here want to thank uh, all of you that you logged in and that you're going to listen to a story on textiles because of course a lot happened past months. So uh, we live in a bit in a different world and we hope, of course, we have good hopes that it will be only temporary. Um, we uh, focus on innovation, on product design, on communication in design, fashion and materials, especially in materials. And we were responsible for the design and realization of the previous trend book and the 2020 trend space. It seems like another era since our lives and work changed that drastically after January Heimtech Hill exhibition. So the moment we were grounded uh, we and the world seemed to come to a halt because of the lockdowns, we had to overcome the shock and we had to deal with a, a new world and maybe also an unknown future. So um, our clients, they started to recuperate very fast and they came to, to a modus that they had to make the best of a very unusual and new situation. My customers produce machines, they produce fibers, textiles, they are finishers and they also run research labs. And most of them have been concentrating on narrowing down their focus, cutting back everything which is non-essential and venturing new territory at the same time. So working on technological innovations, on sustainable practices, and they had to find new routes to connect with their customers. So to how to handle the prominent role of the digital realm. So I wanted to talk about new horizons because a lot of these actions gain momentum already far before the COVID crisis, where something that sustainability might be pushed off the agenda 
because of COVID, because of cutting costs, we also think that they are really going to make their way up. This uh, invent, invent environmental awareness and ethics are becoming more and more important because people see the economic potential on the long term and also there will be more uh, growing governmental pressure. So what are the new ways forward from cyclical design to socially aware timeless aesthetics from exploring new sustainable crops to smart manufacturing, bioengineering. So we focus on a lot of themes in a very short time. So I'm run through some of the publications we made for Textile View magazine. Since next to interiors, we also work in fashion, so in textiles and materials in general. And we want to stress the fact that we believe that textile innovation uh, is a product of honor to this thinking of drastic solutions, because that is what we need. For instance, Bastian Bayer, he uses bacteria to calcify knitting into construction materials. The material biological response to its environment and this inherent property could potentially be used for self-assembling, for self-repairing textiles, but also 3D printing uh, to manufacture textiles and full garments and full products because we look forward to a time when design can simply be printed at home. Also, these are options which are being explored. And when we think of technology, didn't we all expect to be wearing interactive clothing by now? We are nearing 2020 and fashion tech and wearables are still in a phase of uh, gadgets. Um, because it's all about devices still and data collection. But we also live in the Internet of Things. We realize that technology will be hidden, embedded in infrastructure, in our offices, in our houses uh, and in our products. Some designers find ways to use technology to make our lives each easier, focusing on personalized services and others opt for more entertaining tech scenarios of which we will see more in the trend presentation that follows after this introduction. Next to interior textiles and materials, um, um, our, we are active, uh, as I said, already in fashion textiles. So as the environmental activism occurs across the globe, we're rethinking almost every aspect of our daily life, right to the clothes on our back. So we think there's an attitude shift. Um, we do think that, for instance, fast fashion um, will be um, finished because we think it's no longer profitable also and possible on the long run for the environment when clothes can be discarded like stale bread when no longer en vogue and the same is for interior products. So we do think that there will be a different mindset also in the interior business which will challenge us to choose um, for conscious hospitality, for sustainable interior design, for healthier living in workspaces. Greta Thunberg shines on the cover of ID and Time magazine, and she leads a global youth climate strike movement and puts the planet, planet on red alert. She's 16 years, and of course it was also a hype, but we think it will also have a long-term effect. The next generation, Generation Z, is responding to this call for action and even more in this COVID period, you see activism all over the world. They are realizing they can make a difference and they are acting uh, on it uh, because there's environmental threat. So this also means that we have to think of ethics, but also of new crops using resources as agricultural wastes, um, fake letters, uh, all everything which is like good products, which enables us to create good products. We also think have to, to have to think of the world, but also as the design world in a more holistic manner, include how we buy, live, use and discard. And our social responsibility we have to take into account. Ethics, inclusivity, compassion, solidarity and fairness are really very important. But when you really think of it, the most problematic conclusion is that we have to do with less, buying less stuff, realizing our stuff will use, have to use less resources, generate less waste. We have to cherish circularity. Think of mono materiality, for instance, of design for disassembly. 
And also, before starting with the trends, we want to have bring a bit of fun of it. What if we embrace fake? Because the COVID-19 global pandemic has offered people a sense of what sustainability really means. So maybe we have to reshape today's reality and celebrate nature in a way that we get inspired by the options offered by nature. So mimicking nature's processes to come to new product and design. So we look for progressive, smart and sustainable technology, but also in collaborations like here, Spiber worked with the North Face and they created this bioengineered, hyper durable and strong techno silk, but also all the embellishments we make, also interior textiles, um, we see that it is really threatening for the environment because they, uh, when they are discarded, they, they can't be recycled. And they are not biodegradable until now. But Elisa Brunato, for instance, she created a bioiridescent sequence. So all these ideas and options bring us hope. From elk used as a research that instead of zero emissions allows for negative emissions. How would that be? To plant-based precious and luxurious fake fur. Uh, here developed by Ecopel and Stella McCartney, who again such a, a fruitful uh, collaboration. So moving into the trends, um, the covering theme is where I belong. And that was the outcome of our annual trend council meeting in March 2019. Uh, but we do think that is really extremely important as a theme also for future. Uh, though the circumstances changed, the stories we want to share with you are as valid and important as ever, realizing the key role interior textiles can play in enhancing our sense of belonging, allows us to feel comfortable and to experience an emotional connection to the environments we live in. That is what textiles can do. I first show you a video to introduce you to the trends. <laughs>
These are the themes I would go to throw quickly because we don't have a lot of time. But where I belong is a very important thing. Because we all have our identities, we all have a layered identity. We're all made by our local environments, nationally, globally, both online and offline. Because we live in this fluid society, we can't cover all these layers of course and trends. We really want to address some of them at least. Because for some people, spirituality is uh, or maximalism uh, are their lifestyles. But for others, it's just an event, and it can really be a completely different mindset and another attitude to the world. So having more diversity and potential offerings within interior textiles enables us to reinvent our environments, to curate our personal identity. So here's to recreating worlds that you and your customers see themselves reflected in. So we have five themes, as you saw already in the uh, introduction movie, and it's good to know that since we thought it was important to show diversity, we invited five designers to collaborate with us to visualize all these trends, to bring in their personal philosophy, their practices and methodology, and I will introduce them to you in each theme. First is Maximum Glam. This trend responds to the rising interests in bespoke experiences. It creates potential for immersive interiors and materials in response to desire for sensory stimulation. Because we really think people are in need for happiness, optimism, for hope that glamour and theatrical influences will still play a big role in lots of people's life. And that's interesting now that we collaborated and decided already two years ago to collaborate with Bastian de Nanny because he works in this uh, so-called digital studio because he positions his practice at the intersection of the increasingly intertwined worlds of the physical and the digital and that's also the kind of lives we live today so it can also inspire us to see the imagery later in this presentation uh, how we can offer and sell our products at like textile products and how we can buy and absorb them and use them finally so so taking inspiration from artists who are unorthodox, intense and work in an immersive manner, manner. And we see that happening both in fashion and interiors. And this is extreme, of course. This is really rebellion. It's everything against convention. Uh, it's expressive, it's eccentric, it's surreal, but it's also inspiration. It can be dreaming, extravagant and soulful and very inspiring to have an evening in an uh, hospitality area, in a, in a restaurant or a club, and to really be able to live in this spirit. Surface manipulation turns good taste synthetics into joyful vulgarity. And Bastian and Nanny here, he created these, the, these fake furs using 3D printing. We also look at garments from Victor and Rolf. Um, they have this sweet, beat, sinister, historically inspired pop collection, detail-obsessed, sophisticated in execution, extremely beautifully made, but still very loud, like pamphlets and manifest pieces. Interior textiles can lead the revolt against homogenization because we don't want everything to be the same. So it's important that we have diversity and that we bring diversity in our collections. 
So these were rooms made um, by Refinery29 uh, talented artists uh, to turn rooms into interactive fun houses as food for body and soul. And we think that is what we need. And that's why some artists take this holistic view on interiors and design. And they think they also have create and bring that experience in food, for instance. This is luminescent food with all natural ingredients. Um, it was an immersive consumer experience and we think there is still a big need for that. A very exclusive, only six people could sit in these dinners and that is also valid when it comes to those COVID regulations. Uh, we think of materials that transgress traditional textile rules, decorative, abstract motives, uh, fantastic fake furs as here shown and made and created by Bastian Benenni. He uses, uh, used the box of inspiring textiles we gave him, turned them digitally, and very often he also prints them, them off again as 3D object and 3D materials again. So patterns and surfaces are between image and materiality, between abstract and figurations. And the colors, they are really vibrant, a riot of clashes and rebellion, we call them. Very intense, and there's also a fluorescent shade which you never can show on screen. But believe me, it's really luminous. Moving into a totally different theme, because they are also idealists. They look for perfection, for purity, for calmness. They want to, uh, an environment that can help them to restore their balance by connecting with the uber-natural. So we feel all consumed in this busy changing world. And we also want to turn back maybe to an ancient spiritual practices um, to really uh, go into meditation, for instance, but also want to look at raw materials, organic materials, not artificial, not digital. And that's why we ask Raw Color to work with us on the illustration for this theme. So in search of calmness, seclusion and a deeper connection, a pure aesthetic is taking hold, stripped back and essential. To address this renewed bond with nature, we have to look for a different type of material and resources, but also sell our products in a different way. So here are, um, for instance, cosmetics and body products, which people can uh, make themselves. They order a kit with all natural ingredients and then can distill their own um, products as they like them and as they are perfect for their body. And there's also here collaborations between Christine Meindertsma and Enkef, a specialist working together on flex chair, uh, flex, a flex chair made from flex fabric. So it's fully biodegradable, made with very little waste, um, and it's spectacularly technology, but then done in a totally sustainable manner. So here is paper made from fully material, uh, degradable materials, and also inspiring it again uh, textiles made by raw color, the people we worked with. And on the left, we see this beautiful project, which can bring back the uh, fragrances, which have been lost um, by doing a research where they can use the DNA of the plants and bring back the fragrance, which are uh, from extinct um, florals and fauna, flora. So this is, um, on the left we see a hotel float totally made out of pine bark and um, uh, the Kengokuma Hotel has transformed a nursing home located by Lake Toya in Japan into a boutique hotel. They used cedar and textiles which contributes to an overall sense of comfort and warmth for the hotel guests. And the textiles we see on the right, they are pure, they are natural, they are yuta pine bark, paper, uh, paper but used also uh, paper that inspired textiles but all derived from the botanical world. It's more than three hugging rituals. It's more than hand-picked plants and leaves. It's also being inspired by nature's circularity, taking nature as an inspiration and coming up then with these beautiful fabrics and textiles, uh, which we see on the left using algae also and mycelium. Uh, on the right, we see bioplastic tableware made from algae. 
And uh, the designers who created these think that this can replace uh, everything we use in our homes, like shampoo bottles, tableware, rubbish bins, chairs and building facades even. Replacing fossil uh, products made from fossil uh, fuels. Art architecture that really blends in with nature and that all comes in a palette which is totally calm and pure and with all the colors inspired by nature but also reflects the resources they are made of. Moving on to a next theme, active urban, urban dwellers confront the ch challenges of this fast paced uh, shape shifting man made environment and they want something practical adaptable, utilitarian. Maybe they live in small living spaces into the city. They don't have a big budget. They want easy solutions because they lead these active city lifestyles. So simplicity, affordability and flexibility are the main drivers for this type of design. And that's where we asked Envisions to collaborate with us. They are very strong in recycling materials and finding new solutions for companies to find new uh, processes to work from, to start working from. So they don't, don't not only look at the end products, but they also dive deep into the processes of the companies and to see how they can innovate them to come up with these sustainable, practical, adaptable and affordable solutions. Like these panels made from recycled plastics on the right. Раз, раз, раз. Коллеги, слышен микрофон? Все в порядке? On the right, um, we see the story is not so much about seasons or trends, it's about timeless classics that are unlikely to ever become outdated. This includes the perfect tees and hoodies made by Colorful Standards. They are there for the long run, sustainable, colorful and uncomplicated, and they are hardly to be called fashion, because they will be here for another 20, 30, maybe forever. The sweatshirt was invented a long, long time ago. So this story is not just about seasons or trends, it's about timeless classics, which is very important. Simplicity, um, but also the way we sell these products are important. And I show you later a beautiful little video um, where you can see that the making of these digital spaces, as you to show you the colors which are vibrant and to show a little bit of the following themes. Simple colors, primary shades, very practical also with a big role for black. Heritage looks is all about historical legacies, uh, legacies which we cherish and which we have to embrace. Old bin buildings which are being refurbished and being decorated. Here we asked Bart Hess to collaborate with us to work on the images. We think of luxurious materials which can be furry and velour, very, very important uh, fabrics because they make you feel comfortable and they have this richness which people find extremely appealing. Uh, but also the inspiration of, of model of pearl, for instance, of all kinds of shine and sheen, of drapeable and fluid materials. Plastered walls are being plastered in a way that they show, show their patina, but also the ancient walls are being used and shown again um, uh, anew. Uh, interesting that it should not be fake, that it should be new and really look like new, and we shouldn't make fake historic materials. Fake is only meant as the resource and material, but still the look should be new and uh, indigenous and, and uh, authenticity is a big, big uh, value. We see beautiful, luxurious materials, pleases. We see art inspired by history, but then really made into new authentic pieces. And on the right, this is not textiles. These are really plants. In this art exhibition, they used plants, which look like uh, plise fabrics. We see silky material inspired by stones, the glitter and the materials and the bark effects and shakar um, effects that we see on the right in the textiles and the new textiles are inspired by nature again and we see nature's traces also on the left in the wallpaper which is handmade wallpaper. So more velour but then 
here we see that it's aged already, that it has this washed down look, that the colors are them. They are marled also. And here again, making use of the traditional or the original walls and environments, but then dressed up with new uh, luxurious textiles and interior pieces. We think of preserved precious of gold and golden and glitter shades. But ornaments which are inspired by history, but remade. Sumptuous and luxurious as all the shades are. And the top color here is a mother of pearl. So I quickly talk you, if I still have a little bit of time, um, uh, about the multi-local, which is the last topic. Hyper-locals go global, celebrating inclusivity over appropriation, honoring traditional craftsmanship, adjusting the world's gaze to embrace exchange, creative integrity, and diverse identities. We see a little video which shows Jan Hoek, and they made this, people into their own environment, in their own environment. They filmed these and they photographed them also. And the photographs are also published in the hands. Because we think it's very important that we reason our existing environment. It's not about all new. And we see also generation which is influenced by their indigenous authentic culture, also in different. And we want to embed that into modern uh, style interiors. So I'm Jan Hoek for the team Multilocal. I work together with my good friend Stefan Tayo. Stefan Tayo, I'm a documentary photographer and an artist living in Lagos, Nigeria. I have worked on several projects with Jan Hoek, my very good friend. In terms of how we want to tell our story, we have like a lot of similarities. We want to know the people, we want to transfer uh, some kind of energy that comes from, you know, us, you know, understanding the person we are trying to create the story. So this is this person they want to create a story around. And this is authentic textiles being used and reintroduced into modern day uh, interiors. This is these young uh, designers which also will appeal to young consumers which see that they have this rich heritage which we all have in our own regions in our local uh, heritage embedded in interiors which fit their mindsets and their attitudes so this is photographed by a multi-local by a photographer who is living in america but was born in mexico and photographed Iranese uh, youth in their own homes and we see how this all comes together in beautiful new uh, modern and fresh style we see also collaborations like ikea working with uh, the african uh, people uh, and not by copying what they traditionally made but by asking them to design for IKEA and this collection has been sold already now for one and a half year and it was extremely successful and now we go to the colors which are really also just a product of local heritage so in a way part of a wider culture and this was my last slide and i hope uh, i'm still online because i'm not sure i can't see the hosts anymore but if people have questions i don't know if there's still time Am I still in? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you we very can much. hear you we very can hear you well. well. Everything was fine, don't worry. We really enjoyed your presentation. Uh, and we would like to show the trend book to our uh, audience. And among our audience, actually, we have two very interesting questions. The first question, how long does it take, how much time does it take to create a trend book? Is it a month or two months or half a year? And the second question, what subject, what theme is your favorite at the moment? The theme that would reflect your inner world. Yeah. Among these uh, subjects that you touched upon, what is the closest to you? 
2020 года. Итак, как долго создается... The invited uh, trend agencies, they already work for a whole year round, of course, in uh, doing their research. And we sit together with the three global themes and uh, we re really decide then together in March what the trends will be. И какой ваш самый любимый из этого тренда 2020-2021 года? And among these trends, with 2021, which one? Ну что, пока спикер, связь у нас налаживается, я могу... So at the moment, the connection is a little bit broken and I have something to entertain. So we can deepen into the world of colors of 2020 and... This is for the period 2021. It was created by Anna Maria and by two other designers. Here you can see them. I'm showing them right now. Uh, the first is multi-local that she touched upon, and you can see Heritage Luck, uh, then Active Urban, then Pure Spiritual, and Maximum Glam. This is Maximum Glam. You can see the colors are beautiful, and I think that I'm also in line with these colors. You can see that multi-local is also very beautiful. Um, it is very close to nature and heritage rocks. It is also very inspiring, active urban. It really drives me crazy. It is so beautiful, so bright, so emotional colors that um, It really gives you much energy. And this is the calm, calm colors to treat your soul, to, 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 to share pleasure. Thank you very much, Anna Marie, for your very interesting presentation, for this presentation that was so beautiful. Thank you very much for your talent that you shared with us. Many, many thanks. It was really a pleasure to be here. I'm very sorry about the break. But, but um, yes, that's technology also. Eh? <laughs> that's reality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna Marie. And you definitely deserved the ovation. That was beautiful. That was really magic, magnificent. Thanks a lot. And I believe that today we managed to open this and to start this exhibition on a very good note. As we continue, I'm happy that everybody is uh, still here. I hope that everybody can see, can hear well. If there are any questions, either to speakers uh, or should you have some additional questions to Anna Maria, right now, You may think about it, and right now we have a 10-minute break, and after that we will proceed with our event. Anna-Marie, thank you very much, and bye.